Hello, this is Camilo Meinhardt and I'm Markus Schmidt, we're the organizers of the Biofiction Science Art and Film Festival. The Biofiction Science Art and Film Festival was the first festival that put together scientists, artists and filmmakers to inquire about the new topic of synthetic biology. Most of the time in academia when we do technology assessment or look at the ethical, legal, social aspects, we look at the things from a very academic point of view. And uh, including artists and filmmakers in this process about thinking how this technology might impact our lives in the future was a very fruitful experience for us because the filmmakers, they very much uh, tend to broaden the view. In 2010 we decided um, to ask filmmakers to make movies about synthetic biology. We wanted to bring science into cinema and we wanted to have this connection. So we made a call for entries um, to our festival and we were surprised that we received uh, more than 130 films from all over the world. Um, we selected um, the best 52 of them to take part in the competition. Uh, it took us about a year to prepare for this festival. We brought here a scientist that gave lectures about uh, the scientific topic and about ethical, legal and social aspects. We had filmmakers that uh, presented their films about synthetic biology and we had artists here that presented their artistic uh, uh, artifacts or biofacts at the synthetic art exhibition at the Museum of Natural History here in Vienna. Of course, all the winning films can be seen here in Australia as well and um, we selected the most interesting films as we thought and brought it here to Adelaide um, and I hope you enjoy the program. If you're interested in more information about our festival and what we do, you can visit our website. It's www.bio-fiction.com. Cheers, mate. Scientists do not like to be considered as too artistic, too poetic, you know, in a way it's unscientific. But on the other hand, uh, the best science that is made has always uh, something aesthetic about it. My vision is to make use of the invisible body layer, our knowledge over the individual skin bacteria population for the purpose of transforming it into a visible, functional and flexibly adapting membrane. And what we were trying to do is to improve bacterial biosensors. They're bacteria um, that can tell you the concentration of a pollutant in water. What is natural, you know? We consider a pigeon as a natural thing, but it's not. It's, it's created by us and has this controlled evolution. And, and so I think the Natural History Museum, it's, it's super exciting to show the project here. And Looking at the future of life and the future of evolution, it's brought within the Natural History Museum, which actually preserves this kind of frozen moments of evolution. You know, this, this is all about the past and what has happened. Um, so I think that's a really interesting counterpoint, having this show within these spaces. I always use a, a misquote, in a sense, from A.G. Wells from uh, 1895, where he talks about the fact that uh, life is a raw material, something for us to manipulate. This circuit contains, uh, uh, part of it is are, is, are these platinum plating bacteria, and part of them are germanium plating bacteria. It's got capacitance and semiconductance and it's got all the elements of a, of a traditional crystal radio set. Um, I hope to hook it up to antenna and ground in the next few hours and uh, you, you should be able to pick up the telephone and hear the local radio. Actually, only kind of tuning the frame of, of what is happening, and the rest needs to happen by itself. So sometimes it works a bit better, sometimes a bit worse. Never completely, completely in a bad way, but uh, it is actually now making surprising sounds. The role of the artist is, is basically a cultural psychologist in a way, or a shrink. 
right? Where we're mirroring culture back at people to get them to understand where they are and how they sit in the world. Could we create life today? We don't know, but we're gonna find out. If you're a graffiti artist and you want to tag on walls, the most uh, intimate tag you can actually spray on a wall is your DNA. So is it possible to actually put blood into a spray can and spray with blood on the street? Quizás las mascarillas sean algo incómodas, pero no van a impedir la lectura del cabeza de familia, los cuidados de la madre o el juego del niño. I think if anybody needs a, a PR agency, it's microbes. Um, so because we have entirely derogatory terms of abuse for this entire class of organisms, um, you know, they're bugs. Nobody likes bugs, you know, so we call microbes bugs. Yeah.